what's up, Houston? Welcome to Who Do You Know, the show that brings you the who's who of Houston. Man, Mike Chabala. We, uh, we go back quite a bit. Um, but to begin to introduce this guest, I don't even know where to start. I guess born in Cali, uh, developed a passion for soccer early mm -hmm. on, and that brought you to the professional leagues, and that's how you came to Houston. Yep. And Dynamo player, champion, man of style, uh, but most importantly to me, my friend. Thank you. So I appreciate you being on the show, man. Uh, there really is a man from Houston that really captured Houston's essence and grew from it. It's you. Thank you. So uh, let's talk about the early days and how the passion for soccer developed. Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, from California, I played soccer like every other child and um, just grew at a, you know, a, a, an affinity and um, just freakish love for the sport that um, has been an amazing vehicle for me to be here today here in Houston to play professional soccer, to um, you know, receive a full ride scholarship, to get a great degree from the University of Washington and to meet great people like you. Um, you know, and then just you know, manifesting as a, as a child to become a professional soccer player. And then you know, as like, I look back on my career that that was kind of preparing me for what I'm currently doing as an entrepreneur. And, you know, I just go back to really what I think my passion is, which is people and connecting. And in my earlier days when we met, when I was playing with the Dynamo in 06 uh, to whatever, 14, I would just say that, you know, it was the relationships and putting myself out there off the field that I would say paid dividends into my, you know, next career. And as to why I'm still a Houstonian and here in Texas. Yeah, no, so it wasn't just soccer. You got your degree and you also have a degree in... Uh, finance. Finance, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So there's, you know, this endeavor that you kind of went on after your soccer career. Yeah. And yeah. I guess that's really what, like, metamorphosed into you creating Sphere. Yeah, it really so is. So talk about those times right after the career of soccer where, like, you were in this position that you... Right, yeah. So um, <clears throat> I was out of a contract in 2014 and found myself... Um, falling out of soccer, not, you know, intentionally. And so I was really just trying to hold on. I was broke. I didn't have an opportunity to be involved in the game. It was just a bad timing in a contract with the World Cup season. Um, <clears throat> and I came back to Houston the season before to really cultivate those relationships that I had in the past. And thank goodness I had a, a couple of great friends that gave me opportunities. Uh, my first one was in the private equity sector um, with a company called ZT Wealth, a tremendous group of individuals, talented. And I, you know, failed um, in three months, they fired me. And it was more like I took my Series 7 and failed. And then I had another um, opportunity with Morgan Stanley. So I was going to go in their PWM P, um, program, private wealth management. And in the P program, I failed again, my Series 7. So that was two strikes. And um, fortunately enough, there was another friend by the name of Javier Loya, who um, is a very successful um, entrepreneur here in Texas and a, um, an amazing individual, former athlete, and he owns a brokerage shop. So I, uh, I went and I was a broker for OTC Global Holdings. So okay. I was actually brokering natural gas for two years wow. while I was uh, moonlighting Sphere. Not a lot of people know about that. I kind of kept it to myself, it wasn't something that I was proud of, but it was something that I needed to do. And it really opened up my eyes to what I say players do um, that aren't able to play professional soccer. And again, like I go back to it, I never had a job before those three opportunities. And I mean, I literally failed out of every one of those locker rooms and it really showed me a couple of things um, that I want to wear spandex, um, that yeah. I, <laughs> I don't want to be told what to do. Uh, I, um, I wanted to create an environment for people to be able to um, have after they got off of work that they could look forward to that wasn't necessarily a bar or a nightclub, that they could meet people, that they yeah. could feel healthy, um, that they could connect. And that really um, inspired me to play faster and more aggressively towards um, you know, building Sphere. So how does, you, you talked about your failures in the private sector, how does that equate or I guess compared to the failures that you would face as an athlete. Yeah. Um, not to say that you were a failure as an athlete, but like nope. if you, if you fail in 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 sports and athletics, mm -hmm. how does that compare to how do you felt when you were doing this? I I, I didn't try to be very candid with you. Um, and I and I look back at those opportunities, uh, and I'm I, you know I I'm very grateful to those individuals that gave me the opportunity. It was just. I was too raw and too early out of professional soccer to really fully grasp the uh, 
the understanding. One of my uncles told me, you know, as I was transitioning that, you know, just do something and negative data is positive data. So like figure something out, even if it's bad. And I found out that like, I'm not good in a corporate environment. Like yeah. I don't do well listening to other people. Um, you know, and obviously like I conformed into a team and I'm, I work very well as a team, but I was also very much of an individual in my own position. Um, and that I think for me has helped to understand like the differences between like, obviously I say I failed because I think it's actually like humbling yeah. that like I actually got my ass kicked, excuse my language, yeah, but no. three times. And there's amazing people that are extremely successful, but just because you know, that fits for one person that also doesn't fit for me too. Exactly. Right. So for a lot of professional athletes, you're so accustomed to this lifestyle and then you change that and you put yourself in a different situation. Some players, some people have that type of personality that they can put themselves in that situation. For me, it was really challenging and I'm glad I had those opportunities to kind of learn what that was like, but now it's helped me to kind of transition and to fit and create a culture and community and business yeah. that will allow you know, maybe like-minded people that will be interested in, you know, having that world of, you know, structure and business athletics. So the difference between the two for me, obviously failing, and then obviously like within soccer of like playing for a decade and then figuring out, you know, how to make that transition happen is kind of a blend of two worlds and figuring out like what I was good at on the soccer side and how I was part of a team, but then also, you know, what I wasn't good at or why I wasn't good at it. And then obviously applying it to something that I'm passionate about, which is the most important thing that yeah. I took from the whole thing was, you know, you've got to play for something that you're passionate about, that you care deeply about because you can make money doing anything. And if you do something that you enjoy doing on a daily basis, you it no longer work becomes day. work. Yeah, yeah, you never exactly. work a day in your life. Yep. Absolutely. So Sphere, was that something that you were thinking about while you were actively, uh, in the league or was that something that kind of came about after the transition? Yeah, it really started to happen. My transition started happening when I was at, uh, with Portland okay. and it was 2011, I had a bad contract season and I really changed my mentality where I was always thinking that like I was gonna play forever. Um, and then I, I finally felt the business side of sports. I was always just so in love with the game and just you know being able to play as like a child yeah. where I finally, the mindset flipped and mm -hmm. I realized that this is actually a business. This is no longer a game that I am enjoying. I mean, I enjoyed it, but like I, have to, I had to change my mentality. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I did that, I really like was starting to think about like what that was gonna be, what it was gonna look like, how I can make money or what is, what's my future gonna look like. Um, the real transition happened when my grandfather passed away when I was 29. Yeah. Um, and through that, like it really opened my eyes when I turned 30. And then through those experiences of like being kind of forced out, it really helped me transition completely um, away from the sport. And I mean, I think that at the end, you know, through those experiences of having like, you know, such a challenging time through, through that, it was really, um, ex I mean, accelerating for me just to be able to like put myself in a position to to figure out what I was going to do next. Now, your grandfather, you spoke about his death. Now, he was a general. Am I correct in that? Yeah, 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 for 27 years. I mean, and to go back into that is just like in that transition, you know, of like sphere to like where I am now, it was, you know, the transition of soccer and then abruptly stopping. But then it was, I think when I was in Hawaii, um, through like some sequence of events that happened where I really started to manifest and create these, these ideas just started like flooding me yeah. like on, a, on, I mean, there's like some energy on the island. They, they call it the Aloha spirit. And I really started to manifest these ideas about this concept. And I had spent some time in New York um, where I really started to see this new boutique market, which I wasn't accustomed to. And, and obviously simultaneously, I was starting to like work on these other jobs. And I was thinking, okay, I wanna work for myself. I like fitness, I like soccer. There's an opportunity because there's nothing here that exists in helping people connect but there's nothing in soccer and the space of fitness. And so I really started looking at it as an opportunity. And then through that, I think it's just like my soccer career. I had no other opportunity or another choice, I should say, get a full scholarship, play professional soccer or like bust. Like there was like back against the wall, same thing. And I look at the same thing as sphere is like literally like there's no other option. Like this is the only way this is going to be because I literally have no other choice. And I could say like those two are like very parallel with you know, falling out of soccer, not having any other choice, being completely broke, living on my friend's couch, figuring out like, I have no job, I have no money. I'm like, what am I gonna do? That's that mentality when you're like backed against the corner that you're like, 
I'm gonna fight my way out of this. Of course. And it's sink or swim, basically. It's a dangerous place to be, and it's it's one of those. Um, but it's like the fourth quarter mentality. It's like sure. you have to kind of like take the ball and be clutch with it. Absolutely, and totally. you know, take the game. Um, you say so fourth quarter? Yeah. Well, F- okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basket, I was like, wait, basket. I don't understand what that means. Like fourth quarter. Like what are we? What are we talking about here? Third like, period, sounds, fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah, yeah. No, you, uh, the mentality. Oh, Michael Jordan, the fourth quarter, Mr. Clutch, right? I get it. Yeah. But um, I remember when you when Sphere first came about and you were kind of doing it and then it was at the Four Seasons yep. uh, for a while and yep. then it just grew and grew and grew and then more people started doing it mm-hmm. and then I tried it out and man, it's, it's, it really is a lot different than what's out there because it really builds on not only physical fitness but yeah. the, the friendship and the team mentality mm-hmm. and you know, when I did the class, I was like, you know, you know, tag your partner and you know you stretch together and then you're huddled in before the yeah. before the class starts and i love that because there really is no kind of camaraderie like that in any other i totally agree you know class here in houston i don't know if anywhere else and then that's exactly what some people are looking for yeah. aside from just you know being fit they want to find that camaraderie yeah and i and i fell in love with it right away thank you not to mention it kicked my butt <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's it's awesome and it's something that a lot of people should, you know, know more about it. So, yeah. what, what are some of the other things that you're kind of doing to get out there? I know you briefly <laughs> talked about prior to the interview some of your fitness gear. I mean, your, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you know, within the business, we have um, like an idea of like our game plan, right? Like, just think of a soccer field. Like, the ball starts with a goalie, and you're trying to go up the field to score on the opposite goal. Um, like, actually, sphere our indoor concept that you saw is kind of like our end goal. Um, we have mini balls. We have an inspirational uh, play a great game sticker. That's kind of like our idea of, of sharing inspiration and hope into players' lives to be able to play for something bigger, to hopefully get them out of their comfort zone and to really try to like make the most of the time that they have here on earth. Um, and then most importantly is like our clubs which exist, um, you know, outside. And that's our idea of really bringing communities and huddles and people together um, in a much easier setting. I think with like the model of business today, um, you see companies obviously like Amazon and Uber and Facebook where they actually nece- don't necessarily like own the real estate or they don't, you know, have yeah. actually like, you know, the, uh, the capacity, right? Where there's a lot of risk, but they, um, they are able to play a little bit more freely, like companies like Peloton. So I think it's adjusting in my mentality of figuring out how to create a business that is versatile and nimble that we can be able to pivot and move. And so I think through um, you know, those opportunities and channels is something that we're really excited about. The Four Seasons is an amazing partnership for us. It's where I started the business in Kona um, at the, the uh, Hawaii property. Very fortunate. And that created the opportunity here, which we're kind of building out, which Power for us is going to be a really special part of our business. And then the final piece is like fashion, which is what I'm super passionate about. Actually, I don't think a lot of people really know that anymore about me because they just think Mike wearing spandex again to class. <laughs> like, oh, what's coach wearing today? Oh, wow. Like another pair of spandex and black spear shirt. But did you have people come up to you when you were on the cover of a uh, Houston Modern Luxury? And like, like, <laughs> I don't think they know. I don't think they see that stuff. I think they just we'll, see. We'll you, have like, to find that shot and, and put it up there on the interview. Yeah, it's there, man. It's still it's still like very near and dear to my heart. Like I look at my wardrobe and it's like some stuff's in boxes, some stuff's um, in bags. I've actually consolidated and, um, you know, minimized my life in a lot of ways because I'm like, I'm all in. And I say like, I'm all in. Like I literally like, there's no other option besides wearing this every single day. And like, I'm lacing up for practice. Like, yeah. and so when I put on my gear, it's just like, okay, we get it. And like, no, you don't get it. Like I'm relentless. <laughs> like I'm going to win and I'm going to play aggressively and I'm going to be like, I'm just never gonna stop. Like, yeah. and that's one of my greatest things that I think that my grandfather taught me was just to be relentless and to you know outwork your opponent. Yeah. I mean, I showed up for the class and you're over there like, why aren't you all excited? You know, grabbing people and you know, you're kicking the ball around and the, the mood is like energetic. Right but that's away. like pregame, right? So like the best part about like the, the game for me and why I wanted to create Sphere was like that locker room. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, a lot of like, let's just say athletes, they always miss the locker room. Like that's something that they just miss. It's like, I don't miss the game. I miss my teammates. I miss yeah. that locker room. I miss the banter. I think a lot of companies want to hire athletes because of that reason. Like they understand what it's like to work as a team and have that community. But there's nothing more exciting than getting ready to play for a big game. I'll never forget like MLS Cup, you know, like we're going to go play like in Dallas, like for this championship and everybody's like jumping off the walls, like music's up. Everybody's like going like, there's so much banter. (laughs) 
<laughs> you go to most fitness concepts and it's just people on their phone just sitting here like this, yeah. looking like everywhere. You know, everybody's like disinterested, turning their back. Like nobody is actually like, everywhere. Oh, what's up? Like, how you doing? Right. So the one thing that you know is super important to our locker room is that when everybody walks in, it's like, yo, hey, good to get, good to see you, man. How you doing? How's your day? What's up? And it's like respect. Like you have to like acknowledge your team. And you know, it's a little uncomfortable because people don't really they're not, not accustomed to it. So yeah. we're re reprogramming and but that's and, the way it should and, be. And sharing like what a locker room is, yeah. you know, here and then sharing it so that people can, you know, connect players and have this intimacy. I mean, that's truly what we're passionate about as a business is helping people connect. Um, you know, the fitness and soccer is a byproduct of it. So you've, you've been all over the place. Um, I mean, you're from Cali, but your career took you to all over the world, basically yeah. playing all over the place. But, um, you came back to Houston, like what is it about Houston that for you specifically, mm. you love the most? Or what, what is the Houston thing that kind of embodies you? People, simple. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, I don't think that Southern hospitality, um, you know, is, is a facade, like it's real. And, um, you know, my affinity for this city grew tremendously through my experiences in 06 and 07, when this love affair came about, that we finally solidified what soccer or football was in the state of Texas, where obviously we have everything against us, being that was like, you know, American football, yeah. like, you know, home. And, uh, and I mean, I don't know, I mean, as an adult, and this is really all I've known. I mean, I'm from California, but I, I mean, I was traveling around the world as a, as a youth, um, you know, youth yeah. national team player. And, um, you know, in high school, I was hardly home. I lived in the Bay Area and I was traveling. I lived in Colorado for a little bit. I went to school in Seattle, so I was never home during, you know, those late teens. And then, you know, here I am, I've been, I've been probably my, in my twenties, basically. Yeah. yeah, like, I mean, in Houston, a little bit in Portland and DC. So. As what I know as an adult and what I've come to love is, you know, the lifestyle, the, the people and, um, and the community. Yeah, definitely. So how do people get involved with Sphere? What's the mm -hmm. Facebook, the Instagram? How do they follow you? Yeah, um, Sphere.club, um, just like a soccer club, nightclub, S-P-H-E-R-E, -E, Sphere.club. And that's our website. It's a little bit different and I think super cool and unique because we don't have a .com. It's, sphere.club yeah like a soccer club and community what we wanted to That's always cool. be and yeah that was really unique when we had the opportunity to purchase that and then uh on instagram we're the exact same sphere.club at sphere.club so you can find us easily i'm at mike chabala um and you know we do facebook we have twitter it's all the same but yeah i mean if you're interested in you know mixing up your normal routine if you're looking to potentially just like take yourself out of your comfort zone and if you're not even interested in soccer or fitness you don't need any skill um, or have any fitness ability to, uh, uh, to I, you know, kick it. I just joke. I, I, was, I just joke. I just joke. It was an amateur. Yeah, hour. Guys, reach out. We're good. You did, you did great by the way. And honestly, like we coach Lena, she's amazing. And yeah, she was great. It's cool for me too, seeing our coaches run classes better than myself. Like I sit back and I'm almost like in awe, like I'm just like nervous. Like, okay, what do I do? Like my hands are sitting here and I'm just like not even in the room with you because yeah. there's no space, but yeah, I mean, I'm grateful that you got to check it out. And, uh, well, yeah, if anybody yeah. ever wants to come, Shoot us a DM or uh, look us up at sphere.club, 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 and come kick with us. Definitely. And if you don't know, now you know. Mm -hmm.